The nasal cavities consist of two extensive chambers plus their associated nasal sinuses. The two main chambers are separated by a midline wall, the nasal septum. In humans, the nose has three functions. It forms a resonating cavity for the voice, it houses the olfactory organ that enables us to sense odors, and importantly, it is the upper part of the respiratory tract. As such, it functions to filter, warm, and moisten inhaled air before it reaches the lungs. The anterior nares, or nostril, is guarded by a collection of long, bristle-like hairs that prevent large, airborne objects like insects from entering the nose. Smaller particles, like pollen and dust, flow past the hairs and are trapped in a layer of sticky mucus that covers the internal lining of the nose. The nasal cavity is lined by a mucous membrane. Mucous membrane is a delicate layer of cells that is constantly moistened by secreted watery serous fluid. This moisture is transferred to the air as it passes through the nasal cavity. The nasal septum is relatively featureless. Deep to its mucous membrane is an extensive network of blood vessels. These blood vessels bring warm blood to the surface to enable the mucosa to warm inhaled air as it passes by. In addition, it keeps the mucosa well supplied with nutrients. No less than five arteries anastomose with each other within the septum. They are branches from the posterior and anterior ethmoidal arteries, the superior labial artery, the greater palatine artery, and the sphenopalatine artery. The confluence of these vessels near the anterior part of the septum creates an area of dense vascularity called Hasselbach's area that is prone to drying and trauma, leading to nosebleeds. Sensory innervation of the nasal septum is supplied by the first and second branches of the trigeminal nerve. The anterior ethmoidal nerve supplies the anterosuperior half of the septum, while the nasopalatine nerve supplies the postero-inferior half. A small area around the external nares is supplied by internal nasal branches from the infraorbital nerve. The nasopalatine nerve passes through the incisive foramen to supply the anterior aspect of the palate. The skeleton of the nasal septum is partly bone and cartilage. The bony part of the septum is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, the vomer, and small vertical ridges from the superior surfaces of the palatine bone and the maxilla. Anteriorly, the septum is formed by mainly the septal cartilage, aided by two smaller cartilages, the vomerine and alar cartilages. The advantage of having cartilage in the part of the nose that protrudes in front of the face is that cartilage is flexible, so when the nose is moved around, for example during sporting events, it bends rather than breaks. The lateral wall of the nasal cavity has a much more complex structure than the septum. Three prominent elevations, the superior, middle, and inferior conchi, narrow the nasal passages and create a large surface area, forcing inhaled air to swirl around and over them. This arrangement further helps in the warming and moistening of inhaled air. The conchi are projections of bone from the lateral wall of the nasal cavity covered by mucous membrane. The spaces around the conchi are called the meatuses. The inferior meatus lies below and lateral to the inferior concha. The middle meatus lies below and lateral to the middle concha and the superior meatus lies below and lateral to the superior concha. The space above the superior concha is the sphenoethmoidal recess. The sensory receptors for smell are located in the olfactory epithelium at the superior aspect of the nasal cavity. Odors in inhaled air are bound by the receptor cells, which, in turn, signal the olfactory bulb and olfactory regions of the brain. The four nasal sinuses, the frontal, ethmoidal, sphenoidal, and maxillary sinuses are continuous with the nasal cavity. The openings, or ostea, through which the sinuses communicate with the nasal cavity are obscured by the overlying conchi, but are visible following removal of the conchi. The frontal sinus drains through a funnel-like tunnel, or infundibulum, into the upper end of the hiatus semilunaris, a shallow depression in the lateral wall of the middle meatus. The ethmoidal air cells drain into the nasal cavity in at least three locations. The anterior cells drain anterior to the hiatus semilunaris. The middle air cells drain into one or more openings in a bubble-like structure, the ethmoidal bulla. And the posterior air cells drain via one or more openings into the superior meatus. The sphenoidal air sinus drains through one or two openings into the sphenoethmoidal sinus. 
The maxillary sinus drains into the middle meatus through an opening in the inferior part of the hiatus semilunaris. The maxillary sinus was poorly designed for animals that walk upright. The drainage opening is usually near the top of the sinus, so the sinus has to fill completely before it can begin to drain. A fifth opening into the inferior meatus is the drainage site for the nasolacrimal duct. This duct carries overflow tears from the eye into the nasal cavity, which is why our nose runs when we laugh hard or cry. Sensory innervation of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity is supplied by lateral nasal branches from the anterior ethmoidal nerve and from the maxillary nerve. The nasal branches of the maxillary nerve enter the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen deep to the mucosa. The greater and lesser palatine nerves pass vertically to the greater and lesser palatine foramina to innervate the hard and soft palates respectively. A small area around the external nares is supplied by internal nasal branches from the infraorbital nerve. Several bones contribute to the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. The ethmoid forms most of the superior part of the lateral wall, including the upper and middle conchi. The lower half of the lateral wall is formed by the vertical process of the palatine bone and the body of the maxilla. The inferior concha is a separate bone. Anteriorly, the lateral wall is formed by the nasal bone and the lateral nasal and alar cartilages, plus a variable number of small, unnamed cartilages. In summary, a major function of the nasal cavities is to filter, warm, and moisten inhaled air before it reaches the lungs. The anatomical features that support this function are a large surface area, created by the nasal septum, the conchi, and sinuses, and narrow passageways so that most of the inhaled air is in close contact with the well-vascularized, warm, moist mucosa.